cool. What's up guys, it's Devin here with Make Anything and today I want to do another uh, project with my GoPro. So this is what I use to take time lapses of my prints and right now I have it kind of on this janky stand that I just clip onto the side of my printer or something. But I'm trying to slowly up my production value so I decided I would upgrade my mounting system. So I figured the best way to be able to orient my camera in all kinds of different positions would be by connecting it to a tripod, of course. Now there are tons and tons of GoPro accessories already available for 3D printing on Thingiverse and other various 3D printing sites, but I want to make a very simple connector that works directly with my tripod's quick release, so I'm going to make one from scratch. If you haven't noticed, I kind of prefer doing it that way. So, as always, when you're making a part that interacts with existing physical parts, you gotta start by taking some dimensions. So I've got these calipers here, and I'm gonna start measuring everything that I need. Alright, so for this mount, I'm thinking I can probably get away with just a base and a low rim that goes around the whole camera, and of course avoids all the buttons and lights and whatnot. And maybe I'll have to have some kind of clip that goes up the back, or maybe I can take advantage of this little notch right here. But I'll kind of just figure that out as we go along. For now, I just want to get the basic dimensions to start my model. So I'll use my calipers and I'll measure the width and the length and the height of my camera. And I'm also going to measure the part of the quick release on my tripod that I need on my mount. So I'll measure the width of the square at the bottom as well as the top. And I can also use this little depth gauge to figure out how tall this shape is. So I'll open up SOLIDWORKS and make a new part, and the first thing I'm going to do is create an analog for the camera itself. So when you're building something that interacts with a real part, it's often nice to build a rudimentary version of the part. So here I'm making the camera, and it's got something like a 1.5mm bevel, and then I'm going to start drawing on each face and just add references for all the different lights and lenses and all the things that I need to be aware of on the camera. So I'll draw out the button here, the light, the LCD screen. So as I'm doing this, I've got my GoPro in one hand and my calipers in the other, and I'll keep referencing that and adding dimensions based on the physical camera until I've got everything in its right place, proper size, and locked in. So for those references, I'll just do a one millimeter extrude cut and then I'll use a separate sketch to draw the lens here so that I can extrude it outwards just in case I need to reference that for my model. Now I'll move on to the next side and I'll do the same thing with all the different buttons and holes and whatnot. And I'll keep doing that all the way around the camera until I think I have everything that I need. So now that I've got a good representation of my GoPro, I can go ahead and start modeling the case that I'm building. And I was gonna just go straight across and do something boring, but I figured why not do something a little different? So I'm gonna do this diagonal cut and I'll go ahead and just come up with my own dimensions except I'm specifically making those edges 2.5 millimeters from the edge of my GoPro so that I can have 2 millimeter thick walls and then a 0.5 millimeter tolerance on each side. Then I'm going to go on the back of the camera and create another sketch, convert that shape, and actually mirror it. So I can blend that mirrored sketch with the original one on the front of the camera using the loft command. And just like that, I've got a really interesting shape based on the blending of these two sketches. Now I'm gonna go backwards a little bit because I realized that those sketches should actually be 2.5 millimeters from the front and back of the camera as well. So I can select those faces and create a reference plane that is 2.5 millimeters away in relation to those faces. Now using that feature tree on the left of the screen, I can go back into those two sketches and edit the sketch plane to be these new planes that I created.
Now when I do the loft again, you can see that there's a 2.5mm border all around the camera, not just on the sides. Next, I'm going to fillet these edges so they look a little friendlier. And I want the fillet to be concentric with the fillet of the camera itself. So since I measured a 1.5mm fillet for the camera, and the walls are 2.5mm away from the camera, I can just add 1.5 to 2.5 and I get 4mm. So now you can see when I look from above, there's a nice consistent width as the case wraps around the camera. So I'll apply that to these four edges, and while it would be nice to just do that on the bottom, if I do that, it won't print so nicely without supports. So I'll do a little extra step for the bottom, but we'll get to that later. It's really easy to hollow out this case now. All I have to do is select the top surface of this shape and use the shell command. I set the wall thickness to 2mm, and just like that, I've now got a thin-walled piece that encapsulates my camera. Now I'm going to start cutting those holes into the model that allow me to access the buttons and everything on the camera. I'll start by sketching on the front face of my case. So I'll create circles that are concentric with the buttons and lights and lenses, and I'll dimension those circles to have a bit of an offset from the features. That way, just in case I didn't measure them perfectly, it'll still work, and also just so my thumb can press the buttons and things like that. So if I just cut out circles, you can see there are some weird points that are created on my model. So I've got to go back into my sketch and just create some different cuts. I'll just go straight across here, and then I'll also connect these circles at the top and cut everything away so that it's a single shape. And then when I exit that sketch again, it creates a shape that's a little more manageable and printable. So now that those holes are looking okay, I'm going to add chamfers to all of these cutouts. That's just another additional step to make it easier to press buttons and to increase the viewing angle for the indicator lights and things like that. Once I've got those chamfers, I can start filleting all the remaining sharp corners. And it's important that you do the fillets after you cut the chamfers, otherwise the chamfer will try to follow the entire edge of this model versus just those circular cutouts that I made. Also, you might think it makes sense to just give everything the same millimeter fillet, but depending on the angle of the corner that you're filleting, a 2mm radius will look a lot smaller on an obtuse edge versus a really sharp edge. At this point, I'll color my model, just so that I know that the parts haven't merged together. Then it's on to the next side where I continue to create the cutouts for the different holes. And yeah, it's basically the same process all the way around the camera. At this point, I think it's a good time to go in and fill it that bottom edge that we've been waiting on. So I'm going to do a cross section through my model so I can see on the inside of this case. And I'm going to put a fillet on this little inside edge to match the round of the camera itself. Since the fillets on the GoPro are 1.5mm and there's a 0.5mm spacing between the camera and the case, I just add those numbers together and make this fillet 2mm. On the outside, I'm first going to do a chamfer, and then I'll fill it the top edge of that chamfer. That way there's never an overhang that's more than 45 degrees, and I know my printer can handle it without supports. Now, don't think I'm forgetting the whole bottom part of the mount that's connecting to the tripod. I'll start sketching that out now, and since that's kind of a tapered square, I'm going to create both the small square and the top square on two separate planes. And the distance between those planes is the same as the height of the part I'm making. I'll just do a loft between those two sketches, and I've got the shape I need. And I'm not going to merge this, because I'm actually going to print it as two separate parts, which will save me the need for support material. I'm also going to come back into this top edge of my case, and add a 1mm fillet all around. That kind of eases up the transition between the chamfered parts that are cut out, and the straight edges on the top of the case.
So here's the part printed out in a kind of Nickelodeon green. And I'll do a little bit of cleanup with the X-Acto knife, and then I can test out the fit of the camera. And it looks really good. All the holes are really nicely aligned with the features of the camera. And I'm just gonna add one of these little adhesive felt pads to the inside of the case, which will make the fit more snug. Up next is the base of the mount, which I'm printing in another color, but I'm using the same PLA Pro filament from Rigid Ink. Before I connect the parts, of course, I have to make sure this fits in the tripod, and sure enough, it's a snug fit. All right, now I'm ready to attach the base of my model to the GoPro part, and sure, I could just use super glue or some kind of adhesive, but I'm gonna use my 3D printing pen because I think that's better for a few reasons. It's PLA to PLA, so that should create a strong bond as long as it's hot enough. And second of all, because it's nothing but PLA, it's a lot easier to recycle this once I figure out how to recycle all my old prints. Plus, people just wanted to see if it's possible to uh, weld parts together. Let's see what it does. I've got it set to 200, which is the max temperature for PLA here. So I just go in and create a big glob of plastic and try to get the next part on there really quickly. <laughs> My first attempt, I guess I wasn't fast enough. So I tried it again, more prepared this time. And after holding it there for a few seconds, the connection was pretty secure. I'm sure it would be a lot stronger if I drew a line all the way around the two parts, but I don't want to affect how it connects to the tripod. And when I tested it out, everything worked out fine and the connection can hold the weight of the entire tripod, so I consider that a mission accomplished. Till next time everyone, stay inspired.